So the contents of our wash tank have been uh, sitting here for a number of hours, as has our auxiliary tank contents. We are going to recover some methyl esters, some of our biodiesel here. You can see the separation right about here and down is where our glycerol is settled. From that point up, our auxiliary tank has settled uh, methyl esters. I've marked a line here uh, from previous uh, batches. This is, the, this is exactly where it's going to stop draining. You usually want to have a couple inches below just to ensure that you don't draw off any glycerol. So we'll crack the top here and then with our biodiesel 5 gallon container, I am just going to pour out. You have to do this about two or three times until all the biodiesel's been recovered. And we just pour it into our wash tank. We start to add our acid pre-wash in there. And just keep doing this. This way we guarantee we recover as much of our product as absolutely possible. There we go. This will be And now we'll prepare our first wash. Put this aside. To continue with chapter 8, we have just transferred and recovered a bunch of biodiesel from our auxiliary tank, poured it into our wash tank, mixed up the contents that have been uh, pre washed with uh, sulfuric acid, and uh, now we're about to turn on our. Uh, Let's see, mister system. But for right now, I want you to remember we had we had our barrel element in there, and, and our solution's been at about 100 degrees. So that's what it should look like before. Um, you know, dark, but uh, but no uh, no murkiness. So about ready to turn on our timer. And we found out that this particular timer we run for two hours. We've connected it to a marine hose. Now this is a, a non-rubber hose. You'll find that if you use a regular garden hose and you have any, after you do this a number of times, and you get any uh, biodiesel or methyl esters on it, it's going to deteriorate and the hose is going to turn to mush. So we use these uh, uh, marine hoses and they last longer. So now we're going to turn on our mister system. You should hear it kick on. And we've got five mister heads that are just now starting to kick on. And what that's going to do is going to What's that, what that, what's going to happen here is that the mist is going to hit the methyl esters, and since water has a higher specific gravity, meaning it's heavier by volume, it's going to percolate down and gather up all the contaminants, sodium hydroxide, take the methanol with it, and it's going to settle through this system. This mist will run for two hours. We are not going to turn on the bubbler for this first wash. After two hours, we'll shut off, the Mr. Heads will shut off, we'll shut off our uh, hose valve at the, at the base there, and then we'll let the solution sit for 22 hours, and we'll come back tomorrow, and what we'll see tomorrow is a definitive layer of water, a possible uh, intermediate layer, and then the rest of it will be your first wash biodiesel. And we'll take it up from there. So okay, it's been two hours, and uh, as you can see, our misting system has uh, shut down due to the valve after two hours. And uh, right now the water is just percolating down. As you can see, we have definitive separation point between the water that is filtered down and our biodiesel. Over the next, uh, about, I don't know, 22 hours or so, we're going to let this process continue. And uh, it's going to get most of our particulates and contaminants out. The reason why we use an acid wash is this 
specifically. Um, if you don't use an acid wash, you may see three distinct layers, and that's really, really not, not desirable, and those things are called emulsions. They're hard to break. That's why we use an acid pre-wash. We get a really nice, definable distinction between water and biodiesel. Um, emulsions are hard to break. They're a pain in the neck. You don't want to deal with them. Use the acid pre-wash. Um, there is going to be a layer here of uh, see unreacted glycerides and stuff like that, and we'll show you after we drain this tank tomorrow. But since we shut off the valve to the hose, it leads to our uh, misting system. Uh, we've got a little pressure buildup. These timers can break over time, so what we'll do is open this up. You can see what you should look, see what it looks like now. It should look like a cloudy, uh, you know, a little bit cloudy and stuff like that. I'm going to turn on the mister just to release the pressure inside and let it die on its own. And this just keeps your timer, it gives it a longevity. Otherwise, uh, the plastic parts will break eventually and you have to replace it. So you don't want to keep a pressurized system. So you just turn the timer on and kind of let it push all of that pressurized water in there. It should be noted that there are two things that are really, really good for biodiesel processing. Heat and time. Those are your best friends in biodiesel processing. So it's been 22 hours approximately, and uh, our first wash has, uh, has gone through its cycle. It's been sitting here um, after we last turned off our mister system. And uh, as you can see, we have our separation of biodiesel, our first washed biodiesel, and water. At uh, this stage, we want to open valve 16, and we're going to drain this uh, soapy water that contains a little bit of uh, methanol, a little bit of uh, sodium hydroxide, and some soaps. So it's pretty straightforward. We just open up valve 16 and drain its contents. Now, each municipality and each uh, county, each city has different laws and uh, regulations on how to deal with uh, wastewater and stuff like that. Our particular system, uh, we have taken samples of our water washes with our municipality, had them tested, and uh, they said that um, our samples are appropriate and uh, able to be dumped into uh, the local sewer system. So uh, we just directly pour it in here and dump it down, and uh, we're good to go. It's up to you to find out the laws and regulations for your uh, city water treatment plants and uh, do the same protocols that we have, make appropriate calls, get the tests done, find out if you can do uh, the same process as we can. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, murky. Um, that's soap production, uh, a little bit of uh, methanol, a little bit of sodium hydroxide. So we just drain this, and we're going to have about anywhere 10 to 15 gallons that we're going to end up dumping um, right into the sewer system. And it's, it's really no different than dishwashing soap, uh, laundry detergent soap, stuff like that. Fairly harmless. What you don't want to do is dump it in the street, dump it in, you know, anywhere that can get to uh, recreational areas. Put it into the sewer system where it's going to get treated professionally. So we just drain. On this first water wash, you're going to get the dirtiest water. It's uh, cloudy. Um, when we get to the third and possible fourth wash, it should be clear. Um, the third or fourth wash, we're going to do a, a little litmus test to find out uh, the neutrality, um, the pH of the water. At this point, it's not a real major concern. So we'll show you once how we just use a funnel and pour it into our drain after we get to a certain point. That'll be good. And another good property of biodiesel is it, it, it uh, biodegrades faster than uh, salt. Actually, it's, it's less toxic than salt and biodegrades faster than sugar in the environment.
process, drain, dump, drain, dump, until we get to this layer. Um, so, until we get to the intermixed layer, and you'll notice that there's going to be a change in the product coming out. And uh, another secret that we have, that uh, we recover that layer. It's going to have some glycerides and stuff like that. But after I drain it down to that point, we'll turn the camera back on, and uh, I'll show you what to do with that little intermixed layer there. And uh, we can recover a lot of biodiesel by, uh, by tricking that out. So, I'll just continue what I just did and dump, and we'll get back with you in a few minutes. All right, so we've repeated the cycle of uh, dumping water and putting it into uh, the storm drains. We just reached that layer where the water transitions into the biodiesel. And this is how we recover some of our biodiesel. And uh, I'll show you now. So you'll see a distinctive change in what comes out. So there's our water. There's our soapy water. And in a second here, it's going to transition. See how it just transitioned in color? Now we got soap and biodiesel mix. Let's back this off for a second. Let the water settle again. And then we'll do it again. And we'll hit that transitional layer and back it off. And we'll do it one more time. So we've got biodiesel and water in this uh, bucket right now, and we're ready for our second wash. But here's the really cool part about having your auxiliary tank, an additional cool part about having your auxiliary tank. In certain processes where you dump your wash water, you're going to lose biodiesel in the process. This is how we recover our biodiesel. Glycerol, our co-product, is highly polar in nature, meaning it'll grab free radicals and stuff like that. So we'll unscrew our top here and using our recovered biodiesel and water, we can pour it into our auxiliary tank and recover, cover the contents in there. So the next stage of uh, draining our auxiliary tank, next process cycle, we can grab more biodiesel out of there. But at this stage, we are ready for our second wash. And per uh, directions uh, before, we're just going to turn on the hose over here. And once again, turn on our mister system, set for two hours. And because this is our second wash, we're going to do one more thing. The next step, now that we've turned on our mister system in our second wash water process, is uh, the introduction of the bubbler. And now we're going to turn on our bubbler. The bubbler has two functions. It agitates the water coming up, and uh, it uh, increases the amount of water interaction with inside your biodiesel solution in here. So I'm going to turn on the bubbler. bubbler stone in there. And the reason why we don't turn on the bubbler in the first process is because there's a lot more sodium hydroxide, a little bit more methanol, and that'll give you a higher possibility of creating cells. But here's what a bubbler looks like. This little stone is fine bubbling inside your solution. And we put this at the bottom. So this kind of invigorates the water wash process. And after our water uh, mister system shuts down for two hours, we're going to continue to bubble for another eight, at which point we're going to turn off the bubbler and let it sit for 12 hours as before. And we'll come back at this time tomorrow and uh, we'll repeat this exact cycle again. Dump the water, turn the mister on after we recover our you know good, good biodiesel here, and bubbler once again. So uh, we are really close to getting to the final stages. Uh, 
The water wash is uh, very important and uh, make sure that uh, you follow the directions we've given you here and in the uh, Atlas Bio SLPs and uh, you'll be able to make really good biodiesel. So once again, uh, eight hours from now, we're going to shut off the bubbler, we'll check in then and then we'll see you again tomorrow. Welcome back. We are, uh, com we've completed our second wash cycle. Um, after eight hours of running our bubbler, we shut it off and then allowed the contents of our vessel to settle overnight again. It's been about 22 hours once again. And uh, we're just going to repeat the cycle that we did after our first wash, and that's drain the contents of your water, put it into uh, your uh, sewage system that's been approved by your uh, local municipality. And uh, after we do that, we're going to recover this intermediate layer, pour that in the auxiliary tank. Um, which will then separate the water and, and all that particulates down in the polarized region of your glycerol level. And uh, after two hours of running the, the, the wash uh, mister system, that'll shut off. And uh, at which point we'll turn on our bubbler, run that for an additional eight hours, shut it off. And uh, by the time we come back tomorrow, after three water washes, um, we should look down into the bio tank, or the wash tank here, and as you can see right now, um, whereas before it had sort of a blonde consistency, we're, we're getting more towards that amber color. And you can actually see our lines, you know, it's, it's becoming clearer. And you can see my hand probably in the back there. So we're really washing all the bad stuff out of our, of our biodiesel here. So this third wash that we're about to proceed in doing after we drain the water here um, should get all of our stuff out. And uh, there is a visual test um, that we'll, we'll perform tomorrow that uh, is a pretty good baseline. And uh, after that, we're going to be transferring to our bio dryer. It should be noted, you should see that your wash water is clearing up as it is. Now this is almost clear. We've done a really good wash cycle on this. Your third wash should be absolutely clear. But we should get some, uh, you know, your really clean water is going to settle at the bottom and then it'll turn into a sort of more of a milky color coming up here in a second. The acid pre-wash, there's really no substitution for it. it uh, when we first started uh, producing biodiesel, we, we omitted the acid pre-wash and we had numerous problems. Um, emulsions ran rampant. We'd have to break emulsions with heat and or the addition of acid after we had been washing. And it's just not, uh, it's not, it's not the way they do it, you know. Com the commercial then, you know, the big commercial companies that claim to produce hundreds of thousands, if not millions of gallons a year, all use an acid wash. Um, some don't use a water wash, um, but uh, they use a, an ion exchange system. That's usually in places that uh, don't have uh, don't have easy accessibility to water, but uh, your water usage, it is, it is, I should say, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's what's effective. And, uh, you know, our goal here is to produce ASTM D6751 biodiesel, and our ultimate goal is, is to produce a fuel that's viable and usable for Americans that's American-made. Um, you know, to get philosophical on you, this is a renew renewable resource. Uh, when oil and uh, you know agricultural uh, developments come into play, and, and we're able to produce uh, vegetable oils, straight vegetable oils, cheaper, um, America really could, with with the use of diesel vehicles, uh, get away from dependence on Middle Eastern uh, petroleum. That and you know the advent of more uh, you know nuclear power plants, we, we really could separate ourselves and, and become uh, a solid area, you know, a solid have some solidarity in our in our you know. Uh, energy usage. So, you know, we're just going to keep doing this. Uh, this is surprisingly clean um, for a second water wash, but uh, that's good, and that's what we want. High quality oil, high quality processing. We're producing ASTM grade fuel as we speak, so just keep doing this. Read the SOPs. Don't skimp on your chemicals, and uh, don't skimp on your time, and uh, you know, just follow the directions. Uh, that's why we, we did this. There's, there's a lot of information out, out there in forums and online stuff that are contradictory. Uh, they're not made by scientists, typically they're garage enthusiasts, which is great, but uh, 
You know, my background is in physics, and I did uh, seven years uh, studying, you know, experimental science. And uh, some of the engineers that helped us design this have combined over 60 years of engineering experience. So, you know, this is the most cost-effective way to produce biodiesel. You can buy kits that cost tens of thousands of dollars, five thousand dollars. This kit here, uh, this system here, is really affordable. Again, where we're going to get water, and then that intermixed layer. So we'll just pour off a, I don't know, half gallon of that. And uh, we cover it in our auxiliary tank. And prepare for water wash number three. A couple days, um, we took a little break there. And uh, sometimes that's necessary. Uh, Patience is a great tool to use with uh, making biodiesel, especially with your last wash. So uh, come, I want you to come and look exactly what's going on here. And this is before you move on to the bio dryer itself. You really want to be able to see all the way through your biodiesel. I'm going to get a flashlight and show you. This is a, a visual check. Let's, let's put it over here. This is a visual check. And you want transparency. If your biodiesel is a little cloudy, you may want to add more heat. So we'll turn this back on. So you can see it's really clear. Um, I don't know if I'll, you can tell in the video or not, but we can see our clear tube and the power, uh, the power cord going to our heating element down there. So I can see all the way through this. You really, 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 really have to make sure you can see through. If you have a little bit of cloudiness after the third wash, apply extra heat. You may need a little uh, more robust uh, heating element depending on what climate you're in. This uh, one we got at Utah Biodiesel Supply works great. Um, but uh, depending on your climate, add more heat, it'll get the cloudiness out. Now, before we transfer to the bio dry, the bio dryer here, we want to make sure that the pH of our uh, biodiesel is neutral. Um, we've, uh, we want to be able to have said that we've washed all the acid out. Um, you could really just tell by taking a sample of uh, pH paper, or you can have a digital pH meter, dip it in, and this on our pH scale here is, yeah, just at 7. Just to verify that it's not above. Yep. So we're neutral. That's, that, that means that uh, our uh, biodiesel is now neutralized, and since it's clear, that is a, one of your baseline uh, tests and uh, verifications for, uh, for having really clean fuel. Now another thing is, is a, a foolproof way to make sure that your biodiesel is uh, ready to be transferred is also that your water will be extremely clear, just as this is. No clients. And we're going to just test, test its pH real quick. And this should be right around neutral as well. May have some residual uh, sulfuric acid there, but uh, nope, we are right where we want to be. So this wash cycle is, is complete. Uh, we have neutral wash water coming out, and uh, our biodiesel is neutralized. So the next step is. Uh, Unplug your power source that's supplying the heat to your biodiesel. So we're going to do that right now. And uh, depending on how long you wash your uh, biodiesel with wash water, you may have a, a variable uh, volume of water here in the bottom. But what, what I've done here is when I first, st uh, first started using this system, I uh, filled it up with water and drained it through the standpipe. And this is where your, your uh, level ended up being. So the, the pipe, the standpipe will drain anything above this. At this level, it'll just uh, it'll be uh, draining. Uh, it'll be draining. Uh, you know, once it hits its level, it won't drain anymore using the standpipe. So what we want to do is really guarantee that we're not drawing any um, water um, out of the wash tank here. So we're going to pull a little bit of water, right about two fingertips, roughly an inch and a half, um, two inches, not a problem. At that point, we'll be we'll, we'll be happy and we'll be. Very confident that we're not uh, going to be drawing water into our biodry system. So let us let this water level or this this uh, separation level drain. We're at about two fingers there. 
Good. Now there's going to be some water and or biodiesel trapped in, in this uh, standpipe. So we're just going to draw a little bit off of, we're going to draw the contents of the standpipe out. And it won't take long. We'll, we'll know exactly when the biodiesel starts. So there's some water, some water, some water. Good. As we drain that. And since the standpipe is now into our biodiesel section, it'll intermix layer. And there we go. That's clear, beautiful biodiesel coming out now. So now we're, we're pulling off our biodiesel layer and we're gonna transfer from the, the wash tank here, pure biodiesel, into our bio dryer. And so, in order to demonstrate that, I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit and I'm going to get our braided hose here. So hook valve 15, the coupling at 15 to your coupling to your coupling at 19. Alright, like that. Make sure that your valve number 17 is in the open position. That's actually drawing off of the, the bio tank itself. And now uh, you can see that uh, when you look at the diagrams. Um, if you don't um, open this valve, you're going to have some glugging action happen when you, when you perform these next two operations. So we're going to open 19, and then we're going to open 15. And just due to gravity and pressure, this is going to prime our system here. So this pressure here has now primed our pump our circulating pump on the bio dryer itself. So let's get this fully open, just as that. So we've primed our pump. It's very happy. And just do, because valve 17 is open, if you look at the top of the bio dryer itself, you're going to see that it's naturally, because of just pressure, going to be, uh, going to be pushing up through valve 17, which is great. And look how clear that is. That's really what you want. This nice, clear, beautiful biodiesel. This uh, final stage really puts it over the top. This is this is the final stage that will get you to ASTM spec. Um, the reason why we use the bio dryer is twofold. Um, this this particular unit that we have designed is simple to simple to make. It comes with uh, a one micron filter, and that filter housing is over here. And I'm going to pull this out. So. It has a one micron filter that we built into it and uh, it has a dual system. When we turn on this system, uh, when we start drawing from the wash tank with our circulating pump, um, I'm going to open up valve 23, just like that, and I'm going to close valve 24. Oops, actually it's reversed. Close valve 24, open valve 23. So we want the circulating pump to go through our one micron filter. So we're about to turn that on right now. I'll get our power cord from previous. And uh, I'm going to turn this thing on. Now, before I turn this on, the reason why I put this valve on here is very important. We're going to close this off completely. Then we're going to back it off about a half a turn, maybe three quarters of a turn. This is going to regulate that we don't put too much pressure through our uh, filter here and that the introduction of biodiesel is going to go through the filter without cracking it. So just back that off a little bit and we're going to, we're going to push and pull. We're pulling from the wash tank now. And so right now it's circulating through the bio dryer tank itself. I'm closing valve 17 at this point, so we're just going to be drawing out of the wash tank. So I'm closing valve 17, just as that, and now we are pulling directly from the wash tank. And we check our rate of flow right in here. And if you can see that, so it's, a, it's a good rate. And that's, that, that's, a, that's right where you want it to be. You'll notice that it's, you're filtering through one micron right here. It's going in at not too high of a rate, which is good. We don't want to crack this guy. Um, so 
nice easy pull and this will be drawn down and just continue as this, you don't have to do anything, you just wait for it to, to, to draw and drain. So what was cut here, uh, make sure your system is working exactly as this. Um, make sure about 24 is, is shut off and about 23 is fully open and if this is a three quarter turn and uh, you let it go. Uh, we'll see in a couple minutes when this is done. And all right, so we are just about to the end of our cycle here. You hear that? Our wash tank has now gotten the standpipe side, and now we're sucking in air. So we're going to turn off valve 19 and simultaneously open up valve 17. And that will cause the cycle to again not, uh, not damage our pump. So that's kind of a really funny situation there. When you get, let me show you over here, when you get to this region, where we have marked our standpipe level, that's what just happened. We ended the, we ended the cycle of draining our uh, biodiesel out of the wash tanks. And as you can see, we got about two inches of uh, separation between this level and our, and our biodiesel. That, therefore, we weren't bringing any water in. Really be mindful, at two to three inches at the very minimum. You could even go below that, but if you suck in water, you're actually gonna be sucking in this layer, this thin layer right here. It's paper thin, and that contains unreacted glycerides, some bad stuff, soaps, a uh, bunch of junk, and that's the stuff you want out of your body. So, so do this two, two to three finger test. Now uh, this cycle has been complete, we can shut off this. What's going on here since we opened up valve 17, is we're cycling through our one micron filter here. So like we do with uh, recovery of everything else, we're gonna recover. This is closed, this is closed. We're gonna recover our biodiesel out of here, just like we always do. Now the biodiesel on this line could be poured directly into uh, the bio dryer, but since this bucket's kind of got some water and it's a little dirty, we're just going to put it back in our wash. And after you do this a number of times, your net, your net loss per cycle is, is zero. But this keeps your quality high, which is the ultimate goal in doing your own biodiesel. High, high quality, and that's what we specialize in, so. Good. There we are. We poured water and biodiesel in there. And you can see that there is a layer that is blocking our, our view of the clear water we can see through our biodiesel, then there's that clear layer. That's the stuff you do not want to suck into your system. It's dust, it's, it's bad stuff. You can see on the left there, our uh, standpipe, and uh, it was just drawn right out of the biodiesel layer. So, after uh, we show you how this bio dryer works, I'm going to show you how to clean your wash tank uh, and get it ready for the next, uh, next cycle you're going to go through. But right now, as you can see here, we're just pushing through our one micron filter. Now here's, here's where some really fun stuff happens. And here's where our, our system really starts to take on a life of its own. This is, this is what makes it really cool. All right, so at this time, uh, you're circulating through your filter. We're gonna turn on our bubbler. Um, as you can notice, we put our power supply into just a simple uh, surge protector which we plug our pump into. We're also just gonna plug in our bubbler right here, and this is going to cause our little bubbler stones here and here to uh, push air through the system. And what we're trying to do, what the goal is with this bio dryer, is we're trying to get two things out. Number one, methanol. Uh, you want your final product to have a very high flash point, which uh, um, when you do this correctly, it will, and it'll be safe to handle. It'll be considered non-flammable uh, uh, liquid, which is really good. Hence the designation one on uh, this tank right here. Uh, if it was a lower flash point and we didn't get all the methanol out, this would be a two, therefore considered a flammable liquid. Then you might get in trouble with uh, transportation, stuff like that. So anyways, uh, one safe. So we are boiling off methanol, and um, with the advent of turning on this heating element, we are going to try to burn off any residual water, which may or may not be in this liquid. It shouldn't be, but there's going to be a little bit. It absorbs ambient moisture, so we're going to boil that off. So this heating element should be noted as a 1,000 water. Before we plug it in, I want you to look at it. 
If this is anywhere exposed from here down to air, this thing is going to uh, literally smoke, heat up, and disintegrate, and you just wasted and ruined this heating element. So make sure that it's completely submerged in water, or in your biodiesel, just like that, before you turn it on. Once you turn it on and you see something smoke, turn it off immediately. Um, it takes a few minutes to burn it out, but you just don't want that to be a possibility. So there we go, fully submerged, bubbler, and heating element turning on. Next step, we do not want to overheat the internal filter here. It has a you know maximum temperature of about 120 degrees. So this is the fun part. We are going to toggle off valve 23 and follow this directly in your system of operations manual while simultaneously turning on 24. So we're going to reroute where this liquid is going. So we're turning off 23 and turning on 24, just like that. Let me back this off so you can see it. There we go. So now 24 is open, and here's the really fun part. Okay. I don't want to get the camera near this. Right now, you may be able to see bits of vapor coming out. Now, you don't want to breathe this in. It's going to be hazardous. Uh, it's going to be, I think it's called an irritant. It's an irritant. So you want, on your valve over here, remember how we closed this to one half to three quarter open? You want to restrict it even further. And now you can actually look without damaging the lens because there was a lot of vapor coming out there. You can actually see the biodiesel over here coming out of our conical sprayer. So you want to control it so when you're looking on the profile you don't see vapors coming out. But what the goal is with this, there we go, just about like that. The goal is, is by exposing your biodiesel to air and heat and um, this whole process uh, circulating it, you are literally boiling off the water. Even though methanol has a uh, boiling point of 149 degrees Fahrenheit and water has a, a very high boiling point as well, um, this action of exposing it to air, exposing it to air through the conical sprayer and the bubblers, exposing also air there and the heater, it actually accelerates that so you can make that process, that boiling off occur at a much lower temperature. So we are going to let this go as is. Right now we're at 115, 100, approaching 100 and uh, 100 and uh, let's see, yeah, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I found that running this bio dryer for two hours is what it takes to get ASTM spec. That's how we've gotten spec since we started getting spec. So run it for two hours. Uh, it's going to depend on your climate, uh, the humidity levels. But uh, on, a, on a normal humidity day with 20% uh, you know, humidity, two hours is great. Um, and we'll show you how to test your final product uh, in the next section. But at this point, we let this process just go. You're not boiling over. Uh, your filter's protected because it's closed off. Your heating element is fully submerged. And both your bubblers are going full cycle. So at this point, you let this thing sit for two hours. And you've got yourself some beautiful dried ASTM spec biodiesel. We'll show you the next section that it tested for spec. And uh, congratulations, this is a lot of hard work been put into this, but if you get to this stage, you're going to be really happy. This is uh, some of the best biodiesel in the world. So two hours from now, we can actually uh, let it cool. We'll put it through uh, tomorrow. We'll put it through our filter again into our biodiesel dispensing tank to your right here. And uh, it'll be able to be pumped into any diesel vehicle in the world. Um, and details on our website about uh, specs and stuff like that on that. But uh, once again, we'll see you in a couple hours. Um, actually, we'll do a night shoot, and I'll show you what it should look like at nighttime. It's really, really kind of pretty. So at this time, we'll let it, sit, we'll let it go for two hours, and uh, it's time to have dinner. Cool. See you then. Okay, so we had dinner, let this thing run for about two hours, then shut it off. Um, our temperature gauge over here right up to 160 degrees. So we're guaranteed we've burned off all of our methanol. So at 160, um, that's when this becomes a little bit dangerous. So you want to not just step away from this and let it run, um, be somewhere near it, but uh, run it for two hours. Uh, your temperature's gonna get up to you know 160 or so. And uh, then what you do is just let it sit, turn off everything, unplug it, and uh, unplug your bubbler, and uh, you let it sit overnight, and uh, you will, uh, and let it cool down, and then we're going to pump it in tomorrow uh, into our, our uh, dispensing tank there. Now it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, try to get some lights on this. But this is crystal 
You can see the bottom. Crystal clear. You can see the very bottom. Um, you can see all the way through it. See what's light on the camera. Yeah. So it's 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 really what you want. Good morning and uh, welcome back. Right now we uh, just woke up. We allowed our uh, biodiesel to cool overnight. Um, at this point, we are going to toggle uh, valves number 23 and 24, uh, just like we did to uh, turn on the sprayer. And uh, if you remember, these are located on the back, so we're just going to, with the system off, we're going to open 23, close 24, validate that our temperatures you know, within a, how should you say, a comfortable range. Uh, that, that way we won't burn out our uh, one micron filter in here. And uh, the next step is to open up our pump station here. And the reason why I used a half inch hose here, vinyl tubing, is because it fits nicely in this three quarter inch quarter inch hole right here. I'll get the camera real quick and show you exactly what we're going to be doing. But uh, at this stage, open that up. We're just going to put right in there. And our power cord is plugged in. So uh, the circulating pump's on. You know, your heating element should be off at this point uh, because we're going to be draining the liquid and there's no need for the bubbler anymore. So at this stage, we turn this on and your clear, beautiful biodiesel will be going into your pump station. And while we do that, I'm going to get a jar. This is a really good time to do what's called a retention sample. So I'm going to turn this off real quick. And, uh, spill a little there. And then I'm actually going to take two retention samples. Just capture the mason jar full. And what we do is uh, capture your mason jar, label the date, time and uh, what stock you use. Put that aside. But, uh, samples are taken. And we'll continue until this is empty. So we'll just let that proceed for about uh, 10 minutes. I'll stick around and watch it. Part of chapter 10, uh, which is also is the transferring of our uh, biodiesel into the pump station, is also quality assurance. Quality assurance is very important. Uh, these we're going to give you five baseline tests that uh, will help you uh, make sure that the quality of your biodiesel is 95% there. The only way to absolutely be sure is to submit uh, a gallon or so of your fuel to a professional testing site uh, and get ASTM spec. Um, it's really not cost effective to do that uh, 35 gallons and get a one gallon off to have it tested is about a little over a thousand dollars. We've already done that um, and that's how we verify what we've done is uh, consistent and good in quality. Also we check it with a, a gas chromographer which tests for free and total glycerin. Um, you may not have access to one of those, uh, they're fairly expensive machines, but these five tests um, will almost guarantee that uh, you have really good spec fuel. If you fail one of these or more than, more than one of these, you really need to reassess how you processed your fuel. Um, the first test is a simple one. Uh, 
wash water has to be clear. Before you transfer into the bio, bio dryer, your wash water has to be crystal clear. If it's cloudy in any way, you got to do another wash. Um, that's the first baseline test. Second baseline test, your biodiesel um, in the wash tank before you transfer to the bio dryer, it also has to be crystal clear. If it's not, you may have to add some heat to it. Um, if you add heat and it's still not clear, you're going to have to do another wash. Um, so that's the second test. Uh, the third easy test is the litmus paper test. Uh, test your wash water coming out. It should be neutral or very close to neutral. Um, your litmus paper can test the pH of the biodiesel, whereas a digital pH meter for the biodiesel will not test it. Um, just the quality of oil doesn't test pH for biodiesel. But the litmus test does work on biodiesel, and it should also be a value 7, which is neutral on the pH scale. Now, there's two other tests. Um, one of the tests is, is really simple. If you've looked, read it all about biodiesel, it's called the wash test. Um, this could be performed after you wash or just prior to uh, uh, washing. What it does is it uh, checks to see if you have any, um, un if your reaction has gone complete um, and or um, if there's contaminants in there. Uh, but this is a good way, if, if you have really good biodiesel, really clean, dry biodiesel, um, and it's been washed and dried properly, it's gonna separate really fast. What I have here is just tap water, normal, clear, ambient temperature tap water. We're gonna fill, since our bio dryer, from our reaction, earlier that we put into our bio dispenser over there, bio tank. You just want to pour we have a certain amount of water in there. We're just going to pour some biodiesel in there. This is the same stuff that we took our retention sample of. Retention samples are, are more of a more of a way for professional companies to uh, they pull retention samples in case something goes wrong, they can go back and test their retentions, and that's what this is. That's what all these here are. There is random retention samples over the past couple uh, couple months that we just take randomly to make sure that we're doing things right. And if something would ever go wrong, we can go back and, and identify the batch and then do some more serious tests. But uh, anyways, what we're going to do in a couple minutes is we're going to shake this up pretty violently and uh, do some stop frame photography and show you how that should separate. Um, separation should occur in a half hour. Um, You'll see that really good wash dry biodiesel is going to separate really quickly and clearly. Um, and one of the things too to be noted is if your finished product has cloudy water after you shake it violently, then uh, there's something wrong. It means that uh, your wash cycle didn't get all the contaminants out. So we'll do stop frame photography on that. The next test is called the Jan Var uh, Varnquist test, and that's uh, kind of hard to pronounce. I have never met her, but uh, it's, it's commonly found on the web. A number of other biodiesel sites promote it. I actually think it's a great test because it's cheap um, and it's effective. It'll show you whether or not you're, you know, within spec, and we'll demonstrate that now. So, in order to do the Jan Barquist test, we're going to measure 25 milliliters of our finished biodiesel product here into each of those little mason jars. So I'm just going to pour 25, and this really, you really should try to hit exact numbers on this. So. So this is an extremely sensitive test. Two, four, and we are within a drop or two away. Right there. Yeah, meniscus is right there, 25. So we'll do this. There. And we'll do 25 in the other. And you'd be surprised how delicate this test is. So 25 and 25. And next, we're going to put exactly 225 milliliters of methanol into each of these. And what we're going to see, what we're going to want to see, if our fuel is within spec, all spec fuel will pass this test. Um, so ASTM fuel will pass this test. If you're out of spec, you're going to fail this test. So what we want to see, and uh, I'll turn up our fan, because we're going to open up our methanol here. We're going to get 225 milliliters of methanol. And glasses. What we want to do is get exactly 225 milliliters. Mm -hmm. 
ตื่นนะเมื่อสกิลสักนิดหน่อยสักนิดหน่อยตัวนี้ก็จะเป็นความเร็วของเกลือที่จะออกจากนี้ได้ 
which is basically 10% unreacted. And we're going to reprocess this, and we're going to do make a little biodiesel in here. With that, just two and a half milliliters right there, we're going to make approximately would that be about two milliliters of biodiesel is going to be created in this reaction that we put in there. It's an addition to what we had before, so that could, we're going to have about I don't know half a milliliter of uh, of glycerol at the end of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to shake these up. We're going to take you to a different spot, put you in a nice background view. We're going to do some stop frame photography. I'm going to shake all these up and we're just going to let time tell a tale. So. Okay, so uh, we have uh, emptied our bio dryer into our biodiesel vessel here, pump station. So I'm going to return this hose right there. And we're going to put this in position. Here's an important thing when uh, you're pumping, whether it's by hand or if you have a fill right like this. Make sure you open up. Make sure you open up your pump station and allow some air to breathe through it while you're pumping. Otherwise, you keep it closed when you store it, so it doesn't pick up ambient moisture. But if you were to leave this uh, closed like this and start pumping out of it, you could basically cause this thing to crumple like a tin can, and we don't want that to happen. So we just kind of move this into position, depending on which vehicle you have, and uh, use power cords. Make sure this is off. So these are got the car batteries. Each each one of these pump stations, really it's all personal preference. We have uh, another one that uh, is just a hand crank. It doesn't necessitate hooking up to the battery, but uh, if you prefer to meter exactly what you're going on, it's an automated system. This fill right functions just fine. So, this vehicle in particular has two tanks, and we've been experimenting with it for a number of months. We keep uh, petrol number two in the rear tank, and uh, we put biodiesel mixes and stuff like that, and compare gas mileage and performance and stuff like that. And at this point, I'll have to ask the cameraman, do you know how much petrol's in this? Half. Half? Okay, so we're going to do a 50-50 blend, meaning we're going to pump is a 28.5 gallon tank. So we are going at this point, we have reset our meter here. So if you wanna check this out, we're gonna we're gonna pump exactly 14. Yeah, keep doing that. We're gonna pump 14 gallons in here. It's gonna get loud. This is oh yeah, we got a ground cord too. Let's just put this, connect this ground, and uh, open good. Open your hose, and we also uh, recommend using uh, this uh, secondary. We go through the one micron on the bio dryer, and then we have this uh, bio sec, uh, biotech. Uh, this takes any ambient moisture, and it's an also one micron filter. So. It's Alright, so 
you can actually have, there's an audible change in pitch coming here, and we know that it's right there. And yeah, we're right at the top. So that is a successful transfer. Pump station and I'm going to at the battery. <laughs> and you just uh we just fill the tank with American made fuel. It cost us realistically less than a dollar to make. Time, if you don't count that, but uh, that's half the fun. So when we drive to work today. This vehicle. Not only are we cutting down our pollutants, 50% set reduction, we're also cutting down 70 to 80% reduction in carbon dioxide. And uh, out of this tailpipe, our carcinogens by using biodiesel have also been drastically reduced. I should say, though, cut those figures in half because right now we're running a 50 50 blend in this vehicle. So, uh, your mom runs a 50% blend. <laughs> and your mom should too. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, that, that, that pretty much concludes uh, how, uh, how to make biodiesel and put it in a vehicle. And uh, we'll be giving you, uh, following this uh, lesson, we are going to show you the three secrets uh, of biodiesel production, which will help you um, allow you to learn and other people's mistakes to streamline your uh, production business but without uh, getting too much uh, headache. And it's unnecessary. That's why you bought the system and that's why we're here. So if you have any questions, email us, give us a call. Uh, we'll help you out. But uh, that concludes today's lesson. We're going to go drive this thing and you have a great day. Talk to you later. Say something about dirty jobs. What's that? Say something about dirty jobs. <laughs> Actually, this isn't such a bad job if you do it right. It's only dirty if... Uh, you screw things up, so. All right. All right, so I told you we'd come back and revisit uh, cleaning out your wash tank. You should do this uh, every cycle. Um, what we do is uh, you recover your, that uh, two to three inches of uh, biodiesel here and uh, other stuff that was in the line that we poured on top. Uh, so, you know, it's real straightforward. Just uh, drain your water, just like this. Drain your wash water as such. And, uh, you know, when it gets down to about that level, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you detailed close-ups on it. Uh, you're going to hit this layer, which I want you to look at now, as you look at the top of the, of the wash tank. You can see that our clear biodiesel, that's good stuff. Uh, we can recover that. But you see that intermediary layer? That's got some glycerin in there. It's got some unreacted uh, tri, dye, and mono uh, glycerides. Possibly some soap, although soap is usually... Uh, inside uh, the wash water itself. A lot of uh, people confuse that layer with the soap layer, which it does not. So anyways, we're just going to continue to draw our uh, water out and uh, when we get to that layer right there, we'll show you how we uh, get to our five weeks of layer and recover that. So we'll see you in a couple seconds. We're just going to let this drain and, uh, and go. Cool. Alright, so right now we're getting to that uh, stage where we're transitioning from our water phase to our biodiesel phase. And this is how you get through it. And the see clear water. And you can actually see it starting to pour through that bung and you can see it coming out here. So you let it come out and you back it off. And let it settle just for a second and you pour it again. And you back it off. And you can see in this bucket right now, you can see a bunch of junk that's in there. You know, some of it just happens to be airborne stuff, but some of it is actually part of your chemical process that you don't want to reintroduce. So this stuff is just going straight, straight through the, straight to the sewer. And read all the documentation, this stuff's pretty inert as far as, uh, putting through that. So we're going to dump this and then uh, 
the rest of the contents of uh, our wash tank, we are going to pour back into here because you can re recover it. And if there's a little bit of water in there, that's fine too because it's going to separate down and, and mix with our uh, glycerol layer here. So, you know, we'll dump this, we'll come back, drain the rest of it, and uh, pump it into our auxiliary tank. And then we'll show you how to just to clean your wash tank preparing for the next cycle. So, we'll see you in a second. So we're going to recover all of this biodiesel here. Cover this in our auxiliary tank. Be sure not to breathe in when you open that thing up because there is some methanol vapor that will be trapped. So this is another up again and kind of tip it. You see that's mostly water. And what you do after this is uh, just get your spray hose, turn it on, spray it out, and uh, do your best to clean it. And uh, you know, try to get all the water out that you possibly can. It's going to be nearly impossible to get it all out, but just do your best, and uh, you'll be good to go for your next uh, cycle. So that's pretty much it. We'll uh, get our spray hose here turned on, and yeah, I should mention that when you clean it out. So drain it as well as you can. So our goal here is just to knock all the junk out and uh, let it drain. Um, ultimately what we want is to get this thing clean. It doesn't have to be super, 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 super clean because um, our wash cycle, uh, we'll get most of this bad stuff out and we won't have to get it there. But we, don't, we want to try to get it as dry as possible. So when you clean this out, um, our goal is to get it really, really dry. So get it as dry as you can and uh, in preparation for your next cycle, and we'll be good to go. Another good way of uh, dispensing uh, your diesel, biodiesel fuel, uh, is using one of these uh, hand crank uh, metered uh, pumps. Uh, also note that we have, uh, again, one of our uh, biodiesel filters that also acts as a, a water filter too. But uh, here's an older Mercedes, my favorite car, and uh, you know, just like, just like that uh, Duramax 6600 series engine, these old Mercedes engines especially love biodiesel. So these take a little longer to work, but 
I'm gonna do about 14 gallons. It's all personal preference. We like the automated one because it's faster, but they're a little more expensive. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Let's see what we got. Really good. We've been running this vehicle on 100% for over nine months now. And it absolutely loves it. So there we are, there we have it. Uh, we just created a bunch of biodiesel, took you through it all and filled up two vehicles. Uh, we hope you had as much fun uh, doing this as uh, we had making it. And uh, keep your head up, keep going forward. If you need any help, give us a call, um, email us. We'll have a lot of answers that you may run into of problems that we found months, months and months ago. So uh, thanks again for investing in our system. Uh, here's where we ride off into the sunset. So start up our biodiesel vehicle and uh, take off. Good job.